Welcome back to the channel where I look at some of the weirdest things that I can find online. Today we're looking at a movie called Mac and Me that's basically an E.T. ripoff heavily sponsored by McDonald's and Coca-Cola. And when I mean heavily sponsored, I mean there is so much product placement in this movie that I've lost count. We first get introduced to these aliens and the first thing I'm thinking is what the heck am I looking at? These guys look like they're perpetually drunk or they're like some undead zombies walking around. Their faces look like they're in a constant state of surprise with their little mouth holes being open the entire time. And the only way that they communicate is through whistling. These guys are just so goofy that you can't take them seriously. This high-tech spaceship just lands right in front of the aliens and starts collecting rocks with this weird robotic arm in the most inefficient way possible. <laughs> Aliens are just super curious about this machine, so they just go around it, touch it a little bit, and all of a sudden this weird tube comes up from the side of the ship and just sucks up one of them. <laughs> The other ones are like, what the hell is going on here? And then the tube just sucks all of them up and just flies away. <laughs> credits just start coming in with really relaxing music and you're wondering like what just happened. If you think this movie has been weird and wacky so far, well you haven't seen anything yet because that was probably one of the more tamer parts of the movie. Now we're inside this government lab and these scientists are poking around the spaceship trying to figure out what's going on because something is malfunctioning but they're not sure what. They didn't realize in the entire trip over there that it sucked up all of these aliens. There's this giant electric explosion and the aliens just start running out but they're trapped inside the room. <laughs> They just keep blowing everything up. These aliens just, whatever they touch just blows up. But then some other times in the movie, this doesn't happen at all. It just happens when it's convenient for the movie. Keep still. These scientists are freaking out, figuring out what's going on, running around everywhere, but not actually doing anything. And then these aliens are just walking very, very slowly throughout the calls, throughout the corridors, touching random things and blowing up everything. Look at these guys just scared to death of even getting close to these aliens. And these aliens are just going and making their way as slow as humanly possible, as slow as alienly possible. How would I word that? Stay back. Stay away from them. The doors open up and there's this tiny alien surrounded by all these guys with guns and he somehow books it and then he touches this electric fence and gets completely fried and stretched out. He just makes the weirdest sounds while he's getting electrocuted. Then he just flies off into traffic and gets hit by a car. Then the car starts swerving and he looks like a giant like splatted egg. The people who own this car I don't think know how to drive at all because it just keeps swerving back and forth but he's stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Why don't you just stop and like let the alien fall off or do something but nobody in this universe knows how to drive everyone else is like crashing in the most spectacular ways after this happens and i guess people really don't know how to drive in the real world so i i guess it's kind of realistic maybe this is the most realistic part of the movie this movie has so many inconsistencies with how fast the aliens move and what they can actually do somehow mac the alien moves past all of these guards and is able to sneak into the back of one of these cars without anybody noticing he even dabs a coke from one of the kids sitting in the car and then makes a loud burping sound and people don't even realize what direction it's coming from they're just blaming each other and being like hey you nabbed my coke what are you doing mac the alien completely lucked out because he got matched with the dumbest family ever. Mac basically just stands right next to these people and they have no idea that he's there. They have no peripheral vision at all. While well, this movie tries to present Mac as a friendly and misunderstood alien, to me, he's a budding psychopath. You can clearly tell this with his interactions with the people in the family. This guy, Michael, puts on his sunglasses and sees an alien there and he's like, what the hell is that? He takes off his sunglasses, alien completely gone. Then he puts on his sunglasses, aliens there again. Takes them off, then his mom comes in and it's like, 
where did Matt go? Like, how did he move so fast and how did he get out of the way? And then is he just screwing with these people? In this scene, we learn a little bit about this main character, Eric, who's basically being tormented by Mac for about half the movie. Mac is just sneaking around Eric and when he's not looking, he takes a picture of his family and then just moves it somewhere else. And then he sneaks behind him. He just touches Eric's remote control car and it starts sputtering and zipping across the room and then starts doing tricks. Eric's looking at his remote and he's like, I took out the batteries from this. How is this thing moving? A few seconds later, this guy drops off a TV for Eric and right when he leaves the TV just turns on magically by itself. Eric is even more confused and he tries to plug in and unplug the TV again but it's still turning on. His mom comes in to give him a snack and he's like hey mom check this out this is really weird. He unplugs the TV and it just turns off and it makes him look completely crazy. Mac tries to make Eric look crazy several times throughout the movie and we're supposed to be rooting for this guy? To cause even more psychological damage Mac decides to pop into the shower and then leave a bunch of footprints behind just so that Eric can follow. Eric is pissed but he's also trying to figure out what's going on so he goes outside to be able to clear his head for a little bit. He goes out into the yard and then lo and behold, there's that whistling sound again and he just goes and follows it. Now the only problem with this house is for some reason it was built on this cliff and Eric is in a wheelchair. So all of a sudden he starts bolting down the hill, unable to stop. He tries to be able to put on his brake, but the brake breaks as well. You can't tell me that the alien is not trying to kill this kid. It does however lead to one of the funniest falling scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> After the fall, Mac's head just pops up and it looks like he's saying, yeah, that was me. Mac didn't even try to help him for the longest time as Eric is flailing his arms and struggling to breathe. Eventually, Mac dives in and saves him by pushing Eric and his wheelchair up with ease. And guess what Mac does right after? Yeah, you guessed it. He just books it and leaves. Nobody sees Mac again, so again, his family thinks that he's crazy. Dude, McDonald's and Coca-Cola, you're supposed to pride yourself on being family brands and you provide us with a psychological horror? Well, after I'm watching this, I'm not going to order a Big Mac. Eventually, we figure out that Mac just really misses his family and the other aliens that were captured on that ship, and he has no idea where they are. They do this weird whistling thing where they put up their arms like this and make a huge whistling sound. I can't whistle, I've never been able to whistle, but they whistle really well because of their crazy little mouth holes. You have no idea what they're saying, there's no subtitles at all, and it doesn't seem like they're actually communicating very much. They just hear this sound, and then they get homesick, and I have no idea what the purpose of all of this is. It's not just a one-time thing too, they do this whistling thing minutes at a time, several times throughout the movie. I feel like it should have more significance if it's brought up so much. Eric just decides to go to bed and then when he wakes up in the morning he hears the remote control car again. Back again tries to lure Eric into a weird situation, but this time it seems even more sinister. He sees the remote control car again, eerily bumping into the wall over and over again. It then quickly turns towards him and heads straight at him. Mac isn't finished with him yet, as Eric hears a weird sawing coming from across the room. Eric, no, don't go towards the door. Haven't you seen any horror movies before? Here's Johnny! Again, Mac just randomly disappears and leaves his kid completely confused and scared. Everything in the living room is also left a complete mess. There's a random deer over here, there's birds chirping everywhere, there's plants. How did Mac even do this and why? His mom and his brother come in and immediately start to blame him for what's going on. He tries to explain himself, but nobody believes him. Eric's neighbor Debbie has actually seen Mac a couple of times, but she doesn't want to say anything because people will think she has schizophrenia. And that's right, she says schizophrenia because you know, that's cute. When Debbie's sister comes to pick her up, she's wearing a McDonald's shirt with a tiny logo. And I'm like, that's pretty subtle product placement. Pretty good job. And then this happens. It's McDonald's, huh? Yeah. Why don't you stop by for a Big Mac? A few minutes later, when Eric and his brother are dropping off their mom, they really drive it home. You know what I feel like? A Big Mac? Man is a genius. I'm psychic. I tell you. Eric is just completely fed up with this alien and wants to catch it to prove that it's real. He puts a bunch of cans of coke around the house with little straws and hopes to be able to lure the alien to him. He probably thinks this is going to work because at one time that Mac was in the car with him, he stole his coke. After he sets up all the traps, Debbie randomly crawls through the window and asks if she can help. Eric rushes her to the closet and asks her to trust him. He has an amazing plan that he knows will work. His plan is so stupid, he wants to be able to try to trap Mac inside of a vacuum cleaner. Do the writers of this movie know how vacuum cleaners work? They're not a black hole that just sucks up everything. For some reason, inside of this movie, it actually works. Just look at the craziness of the scene.
What? What? What just happened? Mac just got sucked up into the vacuum cleaner, and then Debbie flew all the way across the hall, and then she climbed up the wall like some crazy grudge creature. She basically looks like she's possessed during the scene. The vacuum cleaner falls to the floor and it starts sputtering. His brother runs in and is like, "What the heck is going on?" Eric is just overjoyed that he's able to finally prove that this alien exists. So he says, let's go put it in reverse. And this alien just starts frying inside of the vacuum cleaner. You can hear his screams. Again, this is a kid's movie, and there's just so much crazy torture happening inside of this movie that's not actually shown as torture. Mac is just lying on the ground, unable to move and completely frazzled. So what do they do? That, that's right. They can revive him with the power of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola comes to the rescue, he takes a few sips, he's up and at him like nobody's business, and then just books it again. How do these guys not know that Mac is just going to run away at the first sign of human interaction? Like, what was their plan? And they're going to suck him up into the vacuum cleaner, let him go, and then Mac's going to just all of a sudden be happy to see them? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I, I give up with this movie. This movie doesn't make any sense. I, why, why am I watching this movie? All right, I'm, I'm back. I'll finish reviewing the movie. So apparently Mac feels really sorry for all the terrible things that he's done, and he cleans up the entire place by the time that they get home. Everything is immaculately clean. He somehow put everything back to the exact same spot that it was supposed to be before. Look at the ceiling! Hey, we should rent this guy out. We'd be millionaires! He managed to magically fix the door. I have no idea what these guys' powers are. It just seems like they can do anything except for the exact thing that they want to do, find each other. Throughout the entire movie, Eric's mom hasn't believed him at all, even when Michael came in to support him. The thing that finally tipped her over the edge was the fact that the house was completely clean. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. We didn't do it, Mom. He came back. Come on, are you telling me this thing came in and cleaned up the house? Well, think about it. Would we do something like this? It's a good point. You do not have any faith in your kids at all. Even though we're supposed to believe that Mac has learned his lesson, he's still causing havoc in the neighborhood. He ends up stealing a little kitty car and then driving it crazily. The dogs chase him for ages and he runs right past Eric and his mom, but Eric and his mom again are oblivious. The scene just ends with a bunch of uplifting music and Mac is just stuck in this tree with a bunch of dogs barking at him. They never say how he got down, I have no idea what the purpose of this scene was other than I guess for comedic value, and it was kind of funny so I'm glad that they added it. Debbie also invited Eric to her friend's birthday party, but when they get to Debbie's place, Mac is just sitting there with a bunch of random straws with flowers coming out of them. He's surrounded with them, and I have no idea how he got those straws. I don't know how he got those flowers. I guess he could have picked up those flowers, but where did he get those straws? He's sick, and he can't move at all, so again, they just give him some coke to be able to fuel him up again. Mac and Eric also have this really bizarre moment where they're touching hands, and they're staring into each other's eyes, and then all of a sudden, he's doing that weird whistling thing, and it's it's just really, really uncomfortable to watch. They actually have to leave soon, but they have this bright idea to be able to bring Mac with them to the birthday party. At least they have the foresight to know that everyone will freak out if they see an alien. Eric cuts the back of his stuffed bear open and leaves enough room for the alien to just slip inside. He also manages to cut these weird, creepy looking eye holes out so that the alien can see what's going on. They get into the car and then Mac starts moving around everywhere and Debbie's mom is wondering what this bear is doing. The interaction between Eric and Debbie's mom is hilarious because he's the worst liar ever. She asks him about why it's moving and he's just like, uh, uh, it's um, it's a new, it's one of those new bears. And then she's just like, oh, I thought you had this bear for a long time. And he just says, I have. He just got new microchips. Yeah, this movie is made a long time ago, and they have microchips that can go into bears, apparently, that make them move. I keep waiting for this movie to make more sense, but then it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. They finally get to the birthday party, and it's one of the weirdest kids' birthday parties I've ever seen. A bunch of people are doing choreographed dancing in front of McDonald's, and this goes on for quite a while. When they get inside, it's completely packed, and Ronald McDonald is doing magic tricks for all the kids. Most of the people get up and start dancing to more choreographed music, and then Mac, with his super stretchy arms, reaches out and grabs the Coke from a kid and steals it. The bear originally has paws but then the paws were somehow removed from the scene and then after the paws are just magically back on the bear like nothing ever happened people aren't super freaked out about it too they're just like whoa that seems neat super close call man you almost blew our cover no it actually gets way worse than that Max just gets caught up in the moment goes straight out the stage and then starts dancing his heart out around 55 minutes into this movie the FBI guys or Secret Service or whoever these guys are finally catch up to back and know exactly where he is at least the FBI has a little bit of sense because they realize that something is weirdly off they go and try to apprehend him and then Mac just goes and glides into the room. 
Again, there's another crazy chase scene where Matt goes on top of Eric and then Eric just starts wheeling away from the FBI. This is inspirational music that starts to play as Eric starts wheeling down the hill frantically. You get really big E.T. vibes here and I'm almost expecting them to just take off and fly. <laughs> But no, that doesn't happen at all. Instead, the FBI are just chasing them down the hill. And again, nobody knows how to drive. Everyone is swerving left and right and crashing into each other. They have no idea what they're doing. Eventually, Eric comes to the rescue in this van. And for some reason, he has superhuman strength. He's able to lift Eric in one fell swoop. The action dies down a bit while the FBI is nowhere to be seen. Eventually, with the help of Mac, they're able to find the rest of the aliens hiding inside of a deep cave. There's really bad news, though. These aliens seem like they're on the brink of death. Luckily, the van has some Coca-Cola in it, so they bring it to the aliens and revive all of them. They start piling the aliens into the van, thinking that nothing will go wrong. They leave the aliens by themselves, and then one of the aliens just breaks through the window to be able to grab somebody's pop. The aliens break out of the van and start making their way into a supermarket. Everyone's freaking out. There's a cop there telling this guy to drop it, even though he's not holding anything. The whole scene is just really bizarre. And then the alien walks slowly up to him and then just takes his gun from him. The police just start swarming the area, but Eric keeps telling them that they mean no harm. Eric somehow breaks free from the police and heads straight towards the aliens, but then some cop turns around and starts shooting. The alien just turns around lifts his hand up and then shoots in the direction of the cop. A big shootout happens and all of a sudden this building just explodes out of nowhere. After the explosion, the camera pans over to Eric and he lies lifeless in his chair. They go and try to resuscitate him, but the doctor says that he is dead. After a long time of Eric's mother crying over his dead body, you see in the distance the aliens. They're alive and they're just walking back towards the corpse. <laughs> For some reason, after the shootout and the explosion, the cops are now completely fine with the aliens. They do this ritual where they make this blinding light, and all of a sudden, Eric is just fine again. After that emotional roller coaster, we're brought into court where the judge is reading out the rights of the American people. And then after that, the camera pans over to the aliens dressed in fancy clothes, except for Mac, who's just rocking this McDonald's merch. States of America, when required by the law, that I will perform non combative service in the armed forces when required by the law. That I will perform work. Somehow, some way, these aliens have become American citizens. Who could have expected that these aliens were going to be sworn in? The last scene has all these aliens dressed up and driving this big fancy car down the highway. How did they get that car? How did they pay for that car? What do they do? I have no idea how this is ending. And then the creme de la creme, there's a little bubblegum bowl that shows up and it says, we'll be back. I think they were planning a sequel for this movie, but then it never actually came up because this movie did so poorly. I am so happy that I watched this movie, but at the same time, I absolutely hate that I watched this movie. It is bizarre. Thanks again for watching, and sorry that this video was a bit long. There were just so many weird things I wanted to point out. See you the next time I dig up some more strange stuff on the internet.